I mean, sure. Well, it oh, can be better. It's Doesn't Citroen it's better good. at the moment. Yeah. This much better. Welcome to Everyone Racers, a show designed for the world of low dollar racing and on ball car culture. It doesn't matter what kind of limit champ or lucky track dog league you run, SCCA or NASA, we don't discriminate. As long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussions, tips and tricks, as well as news and notes from the world of amateur endurance racing. And whether it's on the spot, hella sweet, or we're lucky enough, and Chrissy gives us just the tip. We're sure you'll giggle a little and learn even less. Everyone worth the paddock. This is Chris. This is Christy. This is Jeff. And I'm mental. <laughs> and we are Everyone Racers. Welcome to a oh, connoisseur. Wow. Yeah, I told that you was, my iPad was restarting. That was a exciting. A connoisseur episode of our podcast. It is episode 275. And to paraphrase the remake of Gone in 60 Seconds. Yes, this, this one right here. I saw four of them at the local Starbucks this morning. Now. If I were driving a 1967 275 GTP fork cam, then I would not be a wiener. I would be a connoisseur. Of course, that is talking about the Ferrari 275. So if you're not driving your front engine V12 Grand Tour coupe or a spider, they had both. I didn't realize that. I thought it was just a coupe. Uh, then grab your E1R bingo card because, of course, two Rogers don't make a right, but we have three sort of Chris's here today. I don't know if that makes any sense. Uh, no, 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 I'm going to give you props for that one. A lot of times, you know, you're just, you're throwing out whatever jokes, but I felt like that one, that one was constructed. Well, okay. Two I made it up don't make floor. it right, but we've got three Chris's. That's right. Uh, what you working on? Christopher. Moving cars around to the right places. Cause after the Mazda was finished last week, which is great. That is one evening away from race ready in the spring and things I can't do now that needs to go to the storage garage. Need to make room for it in the storage garage. So actually new, this is amazing. The MG is in the trailer and at the house as it is on burner number two right now. So this is the closest it has been to the front burner in a very long time. <laughs> so that's good. Um, I, uh, why don't you tell the listeners what kind of MG, what kind of MG uh, is it? It's a 1960 MGA. It was my first car I had when I was 15. It's been through all kinds of things over the years. About seven years ago, I actually had it running and driving great. And then I, then maybe four years ago, I decided to take it partially apart to get it in good shape to sell. And then race cars and more race cars and got in the way house oh i think the house was in there too that's Maybe true a kitchen and mm, yeah, all that yeah, stuff sure. anyway so don't feel bad listeners he's the most put together of all of us and it happens to him too yep yeah uh, so in prep for this i went out uh, and also for what i was gonna be doing later which is some welding i went out and got i wanted some i needed a welding table and a welding cart and some consumables and also went to Harbor Freight. I was going to get a come along because I gave my old one away. It was pretty beat, pretty beat up. And then I saw on clearance a 2,500 pound ATV winch. Was it an open box just like mine? It was on an open box, but it was on clearance for $75. And I said, well, for 75 bucks, like, okay. Because the trailer is already wired. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. already like there. Okay, fine. So I bought the $75 fine. ATV winch. Literally, I mean, it would have cost you $45 to get a decent winch. Or like for a the come, come along, along. Yeah. yeah so that's why i said well okay the only time i ever used a come along is pulling stuff out of the trailer and this is power so i bought so it so happy and then i installed it you know, that afternoon and got some other things you know, got the to. other stuff put together so that when we got the mg out of the garage into the trailer it does not run at the moment because i have a little, a little bit apart it was great just park in front of the trailer hook a line on use the wireless remote in my hand and stand next to it and why as it walks as it go walk next to it as it drives up the ramp into the trailer and I it was can fantastic it. it was really easy so it yeah awesome. that's nice yeah I have mine installed but I don't have any electrics so I have to yeah. like like clamp it like alligator clamp it to a car battery to get it to work still better than pushing Absolutely. or winch right yeah totally better um 
also have been putting together my TIG welder that Chrissy got me several years ago for a present, because that is what I've been doing since then is learning how to TIG weld. And that will be the subject of our show later. So that's been my week. It's called foreshadowing people. Yep. Yay. Uh, let's do Christian. No, let's not. Okay. Let's read the show Chris notes. Chrissy. Okay. Christine, I'm looking for my definitely. glasses. I am not wow. looking at the show notes. <laughs> um, I did all the cookies. Saturday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday was all the cookies. So we made, um, they're not necessarily Chrissy's moms. They're, they sit, well, they say Chrissy's moms, but. That's the brand. It's the brand. Correct. I guess there's other people that <laughs> whoa, make. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are you telling me the box that I opened today that said Chrissy's mom's cookies on it were actually made by Chrissy's, by Chrissy's, Chrissy? Maybe. Yep. She has helpers, and if you saw, well, I'm okay with that, right? Yes, so she's supervising at least. It is a yes, absolutely. A, it is. It's a Santa Claus situation. You've got kind your of, designated, yeah, I get you know, that person, and then yeah, you know. you're right. Yep, she's there's got a lot a staff of staff. Yes, this there's time of year. quite a staff. Yeah, and there's uh, I don't know, there's five of us, six of us maybe. Uh, family friends came over uh, to my my parents' house, and my sister was there. Kids came. It was uh, yeah, it was a lot, but it was great as always. And then Sunday we packed all the boxes. So I hand labeled a lot of the things that you saw. Oh, well, it arrived today, but I have not eaten any yet. So I cannot oh. give a report. Okay. Well, I forgot. I also installed a new sink to garbage disposal and that. faucet at Chrissy's mom's house. Merry Christmas to mm. them. Oh, and yep. they were made in Chrissy's mom's kitchen. Yes. That's fine. Yes, they were completely acceptable. The point of origin <laughs> is thank is you. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. The delineation yes. there. Thank. I'm sorry. If we, would you have rejected them if there were any? No. Not okay, at all. fine. I was gonna say yeah. just throw them. Away. <laughs> just looking for truth in advertising. 275 uh, episodes. You guys have been friends for 10 years, and you're asking if Jeff would reject a cookie. Yeah, I mean, I'm not asking. I'm just was making fun. Depends he's, on the he's... cookie. Yeah, yeah. That's the guy that <laughs> Look extra tubby in the big Star Wars sweat. <laughs> All, right. All right, tubby. Come on, Jeffrey. What are you? Okay, working I'll go because uh, I have nothing to say. I had to work this weekend training my student government. Aww. So uh, hopefully, but that should be the last weekend activity other than a quick trip to New York City for a Broadway show for like a month, month and a half. So excited. Good, it's going to be like 13 degrees this week. Doesn't matter. So. I got plenty of inside work to do too. Good. Excellent. <laughs> That's right. it for me. Oh, could not Christian. Yes. So, um, I, uh, the Mercedes, as we've been talking about, uh, with misfire codes, uh, is, it's just gotten to the point where it's not usable. I, I, I've, I've driven it a little bit. So Saturday we went car shopping and that is a variation on everyone's favorite game. What did mental buy? Mm. I will lay out mm. parameters. Please do. Okay. 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 Well, I, I'm um, sad first. Can I be sad for a second? Oh no, I it's, still have the AMG. No, but it's I have I have ideas and we haven't talked about it yet because I no. keep forgetting to call you after your yeah. home. Um so. well and, and I've 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 been following the unicorn of my destruction uh thread yeah. on yeah. grassroots motorsports. I am not finding coolant in the oil. Right. Um I'm gonna drain it this weekend and look, it is not eating coolant. It is it still is not right the head there. gaskets. It's not. That's where I'm. Yeah, that's where I'm at. So, but the the flip side is is I I can't keep hurling parts at it. Uh, I went with the the mass airflow sensor replacement, and because it's AMG, I can't just pull the mass airflow sensor out. I have to buy the whole thing. So that's four hundred and they, they ain't cheap parts. No, they're not. And uh, so uh, I'm I'm researching how to test the fuel pressure to see if it's just getting enough fuel. And yeah. we'll, well, well, the the other thing we'll talk more later. I, um, pull the intake manifold. The gaskets do go bad. The bolts can loosen up. There could be a hole in the rubber boot before the throttle between the mass air flows and the throttle body, causing unmetered air to get unmetered in. Unmetered air. Mm -hmm. All of those things are possible. Okay. And it, pulling the intake manifold is not hard, and nor is it all that expensive to get the par correct parts from FCP Euro, which is new gaskets and new bolts. That's that's where I would start. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So yeah. to that end, though, uh, Vicky. Vicky said, quote, um, no more janky ass cars. You can go work on janky ass cars with your friends, but this has to get me to and from work. So she put a limit of two. It's got to be newer than 2016. Uh, just because we're just 
we're not we're, and, we're and focused on the house go for it will this be her car or your car that's not so my in, question i just wanted to i well, wanted that in the intro so, uh, initially it was we were looking at compromised vehicles but finally she's like well why are we getting something that we agree on because i'm getting what i want when we get farther along in the house so it is now purely my vehicle which oh, brings okay. in the second oh, qualification okay, okay. of i needed to enjoy it it needed to be something fun and um, mm -hmm. okay. so um i will i was willing to compromise for the right vehicle that i did not find the right vehicle um but it needed to be a manual so i will this is probably going to give it away it is a manual okay 2016 or newer 16 or newer manual, manual. Fun. fun enough okay um so do we all get now a question that, that feels right okay <laughs> uh, i will ask a continent of manufacturers origin oh it's japan okay i, I feel like that's indicated when you say manual oh, europe it could have been some. european yeah, okay and there's some weirdo american manuals out there too well like i can't put it past you that something like a mustang would have showed up really that's true right mm -hmm. okay no i i um yeah that was uh I was looking at the GTs, but to get the ones yeah. that would have met so the criteria. Not, not an impossibility. That's why I thought that. Fair enough. It. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah. All yeah. right. Give me, starting with zero, is it an acceptable answer? The size human being that would fit in the back seat. <laughs> could we get an eight-year-old back there? Could we get nobody back there? Or could zero. we get a full size? Okay. Is it a hatch? It is not. I feel like you guys right. have I'm ready for my guess. Now. Yeah, exactly. You you get ready? to go first. I got number go two. Go ahead. Uh, Andy Miata. And the winner is Chris. We're waiting for the share, everybody. I'm know. guessing. Just white. Wait for it. Black. Oh. Okay. Good in Old the Las move. Vegas sun. Yeah. Right. Perfect. Yeah, well, so I said bold move in the in the uh, desert. Absolutely so, great so, cars. Yeah, we we I basically it came down to anything fun to drive. Uh, you know, manual transmission. I couldn't find anything European that was a manual. Um and the uh the SS's and the Mustang GTs were a little out of the price range. Uh, although I was almost, I was within $4,000 of an F type R. <laughs> yeah. That would have been before bad you, Before you said no back seat. <laughs> yes. I, I yes. applaud this. That's great car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before you said no back seat, I was going to say Civic SI. Because I that was, also I was all your thinking B, BRZ twins. And the BRZs and the SIs were out there. And uh, when it came down to it, I narrowed it down. I We had it down to... Um, there was a, it was a BRZ. I've driven them and they're not bad cars. They just don't speak to me. And then the, um, we looked at the civic SI and, and it just to be an elitist, I live in a dry climate and with snow, I didn't want a front wheel drive. I wanted a rear wheel drive car. Yeah. 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 No, you I, can't I was, go wrong with an ND Miata. Yeah, that is no, a wonderful ND Miata car. Is, it's amazing. I, we, I applaud we this. It, we had it down to four of them. Two were at CarMax. One was a 2021 with 7,000 miles on it. And it was an amazing deal, but it was the uh, sport, the entry level. The, another one was a, um, an RF club, which comes with possibly the adjustable Bilsteins, the limited slip. It did not have the Brembos, but that would have had to have been shipped in. I found- but, And that would have been the hard top, right? The RF is the retractable correct. hard top, yeah. Yes. Then we found on the Carfax website, found an RF locally, which is also the grand touring model, leather seats, all that nine yards. Um, but it was uh, their advertised price. And then they had to add on their refurbishment, which was $2,000. And I called high bullshit on that. And we walked, walked out. out on the deal. Good move. And while we were going to probably buy the one from CarMax, I went back to the Carfax website, found this one. It was $5,000 cheaper than all of the other ones. It is a one owner, 2016. So I don't have the extra 500 horsepower, 30, 30 ponies, but it is a grand touring model with everything, but an automatic. 
has a, uh, we test drove it with 26,900 and something miles on it. And now it has 2,734 miles on it. And, uh, uh, and I just, CarMax is a wonderful experience. We've done a lot of dealing with there, but I'd forgotten what it was like to deal with a high-end dealer. Um, when they took it in on trade, they put four brand new tires on it. When we drove it off the uh, showroom, it had a full tank of gas, you know, this, and they, and they just detailed it because that's what, you know, a Mercedes dealer does. So this lovely bought and sold here in Las Vegas came to us. Uh, I like the dark Mazda graphite dealer. wheels. Excellent. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I, I and, applaud uh, this. And yeah. I have to say the RF, as great as it'd be, if it's purely a street car for its whole life, if ever in this car's future would be the potential for any track time. A, and RF a, is, yeah, you can't. You, uh, you can't put a roll bar in an RF and the roof on that is non-structural. It's just, it's ah, flimsy. Good so note, good enough. So if you that. ever want to put an ND on track, it must be a soft top. You, um, Fly Miata makes uh, a hard uh, makes a roll bar for it, but you will never be able to open the roof. Yeah, because it occupies a space where the roof folds into. Um, so initially, I was a little bummed about not being able to get the RF because I was kind of leaning towards that. But they look uh, great. They're amazing as, looking. Yeah. As soon as yeah, as soon as I I looked that up, I'm like, oh, good. I'm glad I got the uh, the mm -hmm. drop top. Uh, Metzl, did you uh you owned a race car Miata? Did have you ever lived in Miata before on the street? Not really. No, I bought, I bought that one. Um, it was my fun car. I bought out of an impound yard and goofed off with it till it became a lemons car. So no, I've never lived with the Miata. Mm -hmm. They're I, great. Yeah. I'm already rubbing my arm, ready for another one. <laughs> oh, me, me too. Chrissy, Chrissy's been bugging me for <laughs> yeah. years to get Years. I know. Yeah. I keep asking and I'm, yeah. I will well, We'll have but, to go yeah, steal you... gyms, fix it, and then just pass it around. No, Good. I don't want gyms. No. <laughs> Oh wait, no, not, no, not, no, miracle. not miracle. The not miracle. Uh -huh. Oh, I'll take yeah, the yeah, NC. The NC. I was yeah. like, no, I don't want miracle. That's no, no. terrible. Oh, but I didn't want miracle. I'm the one that built it. The uh the biggest thing between this one is like when I'm feeling a little froggy, I was driving to work this morning and decided to be a little bit of a hoon. To I'm me, not doing I'm else. I'm not committing a felony. Uh, when I feel like yeah. being a hoon in the AMG, I'm committing you, a felony. Usually. Straight to jail. Yeah. You push the loud pedal, straight to jail. Yeah. Anyway, so. uh, Chrissy is buffering, so I guess I get to yell. I was buffering too, but hey, Metal, one more thing. I'm just hoping you continue to have the attitude you had late in your life with the Boxster, is that putting the top down is fun. Already, just go, already, just already, do it. yep. Just already put the top down. Yeah. Because it's so um, easy. It's a clip, flunk. It, and it's it literally, <laughs> it is, a, yeah. Um, in fact, Vicky and I were out driving around and we, we dropped the top because the weather's during the afternoon is still nice enough to do that and yeah pretty much yeah, what is the it. evening that's not nice enough i just want oh, to well, i think in the in the day i bet it can be hot uh today or today got up to 60 let's see right now the sun so that's what i'm trying down. to figure out like it you said during the night it's not too cold, i mean though. too cold come on it's, what when it's, it's 50, 50 you don't like your top down either yeah. so it's 52 degrees uh the overnight low windows up 30. heat on yeah which Perfect. totally top Absolutely. down yeah yep. the <laughs> i can count on like one hand the number of times i was in miracle with the top up if the wheels I, were moving the top was down i, I didn't care to, what kind of park uh i have a quick story <laughs> of uh, the time when your wife oh, said uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> all right people probably know the story when they say probably not no, that? we Who we is? live about almost two hours away from well, each other yeah, right? yeah, at this yeah. point yes. you lived in hewitt oh so we were so like three were, hours okay, apart you right. tell the story because you were there go ahead i i show up at the wawa at near my work in the morning for something at this point my date my daily driver was a 1990 miata i had purchased for 500 dollars. Yeah. um the car had no door panel on the driver's side it was a it was a 500 hundred dollar miata but it ran and drove great um so i went to wawa and i was dressed for work which at the time, you know, you look nice. And um, as I'm there, and this is this is a long time ago. I hadn't known Jeff all that long. And you know, as I'm as this lady kind of gives me a stink eye as I'm getting in and out of the car. I'm like, oh, what's going on with there? I don't know. And I was like, she looks familiar though. I couldn't place it. And later on, Jen said to Jeff, 
So I went drove to work, which is three hours away. It was she had just started recommuting there from Hewitt, North Jersey to Reading, Pennsylvania. She went. I went to work, and this was like probably November, cold November day, maybe even December day. Yeah. She says. She says. I look over. There's some jackass in a tie in a shitty Miata with the top down, like fueling up, and I'm like. God, that's like what a Jeff's idiot for. Oh, shit. It is Jeff's idiot. Friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks oh, boy. for indulging. Yep. All right. Yell news and notes because I got the first it- story and I need to prepare myself. <laughs> I was trying to figure out what preparing it looks like. Oh, total buffer. Uh, so oh. a f- no, it's yeah. you're, when, you're, when you're too loud, too far away this from the mic. And notes that time. Worked hard. That works better. A few weeks ago, we had the One Lap of America theme show, and Mental was able to open the show with the history of the event, etc. So I didn't get to say my story about how I got involved or learned about the One Lap. And my story is quick, and it is about Faye and Dave Teal. In the early 80s, as I became more entrenched in automotive culture with my father's favorite pastime of TSD rally, included hanging out in the pubs after the rally and collecting trophies and hanging out with his SCCA friends as they shared stories of their automotive adventures. Uh, Some of the best stories came from Dave and Faye Teal. Uh, Faye Teal was the daughter of a Volkswagen dealer, road racer, rallyist, winner of a Nevada Open Road Challenge, and One Lapper. In the early years, this is when the One Lap was much closer to the outlaw Sea to Shining Sea Dash meets TSD Rally. Um, Faye actually ran 25 consecutive One Laps. Uh, Her daughter ended up marrying somebody with the last name Yates uh, with the same name as the guy who used to run Car and Driver magazine. Uh, But that's not what the story is about. The story is about Faye, who also had MS and raised over $250,000 while logging 195,000 miles of competitive driving for charity that she founded called One Laps to or Laps to Conquer MS or LCMS. One of my favorite stories was when her and Dave were leaving for a transit zone in their Scirocco and uh, she realized she left her crutches, which she can't even get out of the car at that point without her crutches. And uh, you got to be there on time. So she ditched her crutches and said, someone will bring them to me. And they did because one lappers are a night tight knit group. As you may have picked up with all the past tenses in this story, Faye conquered 40 plus years of primary progressive multiple sclerosis and passed away last week at the age of 78. Uh, Car driver story from her back in the 90s. Uh, If you missed it, take a minute, read her obituary. I'll post it in the show notes. If you're so moved, make a donation to LAPS to conquer MS. Um, means a lot to me because she meant a lot in my life and, uh, I'll probably be attending her funeral. That's a nice story. Thank you for that. Very much is. And I have to apologize to everybody for that work. We seem to be giga blasting this evening, so I'm not sure why, uh, but we the, in- the internet is the internet. Yeah, uh, no, I know we, uh, we haven't reset it in a while, so we keep going away and we keep coming back. So sorry about that. Okay. On Monday, car and driver published their annual 10 best list. Once an anticipated published issue of the magazine, the great media chain media change uh, might affect its re- uh, relevance. Even car and driver admits 10 best just turned 40. Like many 40 year olds, it's going through a time of reflection and reassessment. 10 best assures us that it's not a midlife crisis, but an evolution. Yeah, if you say so. But in a sense, the editors have redefined the list to its original purpose by removing trucks and SUVs. That's fun. Uh, which now have their own 10 best list that will be re- released next month. They also set a price cap of $110,000. Also very nice. Uh, Without further ado, but hopefully with further discussion, is the list. The all-electric BMW 14. The Cadillac. No, it's the i4. I4. Sorry. I4. (laughs) Shows how much I just read copy. Sorry about that. Chrissy is not into electric cars, clearly. (laughs) I'm not. I apologize. The i4 and the i8. Don't worry about it. The the 710 cap? Yes. Yes, Okay, cool. I just did a 710 (laughs) cap. I apologize. I'm (laughs) sure you know the next two cars and know exactly what they are. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, the Cadillac CT4 V Blackwing, as well as the 668 horsepower supercharged 6.2 liter V8 powered CT5 V Blackwing, the Corvette, 
the Honda Accord, the Honda Civic, the Porsche 718. Is that set? Yeah, that's I'm just kidding. 718. Uh, Boxer Cayman and the Toyo Baru, Toyo Baru, uh, BR GR Twins and the uh, Toyota GR Corolla, as well as the GR Supra. They get it wrong. They get it right. You missing anything? It's a good list, in my opinion. I, I think. Couldn't yeah. help but notice it's not a Miata on there, but whatever, you know, or a Mercedes. I was going to say that, well, I think probably all the price good cap? Mercedes are probably over the price cap. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah. All right. yeah. Uh, pedestrian Mercedes, I wouldn't say is probably keeping up with some of these on the list. The V6 E-Class was on there for several years, but now it is late in its life cycle. So I think some yeah. other things moved along. So. Yeah. But like, when, I think when, when, like the one we have was on 10 best for a couple of years. So. Yeah. yeah. I think probably the Miata fell off for the same reason. It's a little long in the life cycle. Yeah, with the new, all the GR cars are all much newer. So, yeah, yeah. that's true. GR Corolla, I haven't seen or touched, but I've heard good things. And the Supra coming in a manual, I think totally changes that car. So, and they, that's what they specified. It was interesting. They specified the GR Supra. So, they're not going for the raw horsepower. You know, the, if I'm not mistaken, that one's the four cylinder. Uh, manual is the six cylinder only. No, never mind. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyway, I like the list. Chris, what do you think? Missing anything? No, it's good. All, uh, there's only so much you can choose. And I've I've never driven most of those cars, but the, all the reviews of all of them are universally fantastic. So, yeah. Great. Great. All right. Now, set your way back machine to the 1960s. Enterprising Chevrolet dealers like Don Yanko were able to build exclusive bespoke hot rods by using the General Motors Central Office Purchase Order Program, which was actually meant for commercial fleet vehicles to order low-spec Camaros with giant 427 big block V8s. Now, it became a thing. It was named for that or ordering process abbreviation, the Copo Camaro. It was a race-ready factory hot rod. And in 2011, General Motors teased the renewal of the program at SEMA and ended up offering the Copo Camaro on and off for the last 10 years. Now, muscle cars are on their way out. This is the last time you'll see those Dodge Hemis, the tire smokers the, that are pure gasoline. They're introducing hybrids and electrics. But the 2023 Copo Camaro is available with a 10 oh. Three five liter V8. Oh, clutch known my in, pearls. <laughs> Holy shnikes. Known internally as the ZZ632, referencing the freedom units of 632 cubic inches. Now, Thomas Hyundai over at the Autopian is quick to point out the output has not been officially announced yet, but we can expect from a factory engine 1,004 horsepower, 876 foot pounds on pump 93 octane. No. Obviously not a street How is that car. legal? I was going to say. Not, not. not a street legal car. And you need $15,000 for a deposit. But in case you do, we've got the purchase link as well as a link to the article in our show notes. But as Thomas cautions, final MSRP has not been revealed yet and do not expect this to be cheap. Yeah, I think the past Copos have been like drag specials. Oh, they're all, yeah. Yeah, when, yeah. When, similar uh, to the- In 2011, the, Chevy yeah. started doing it. Um, but yeah, up until that, like the, the, the thing that they used to do is that, yeah, they would just get onto the, um, fleet ordering thing. And then they were building the Yanko Novas and the Yanko, uh, Stinger Corvairs and that sort of thing. Cause they would just order them up the way they wanted. Yeah. 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 But I mean, I think the, the most recent Copo Camaros have all been delivered on like drag slicks with no interior yeah. and everything. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I believe there's like a special series that they uh, that that they allow those things to go racing. Absolutely. Okay. I'm so pushing sorry. buttons here. So uh, get to my next Jeff's, section. Yeah, Jeff's pushing buttons and I had failed to completely update the show notes. But oh. uh, we're no. going to swap. It's okay. We, I, I got something going here. Oh, uh, no, it's, it's, it's already there. Oh, okay. Uh, you share it and I'll talk about it. Uh, so you want to go really fast. You want to go really fast in a straight line, but you don't want to hang out with those dragster guys who live a quarter mile at a time. Well, step up to the plate. Yes, yeah, exactly. For those six quarter pounders or less. 
Step up to the plate and jump on this on racingjunk.com. A 1980 Land Speed Camaro for only $24,500. Lots of good pictures in here. Click through them while I read the item description. Bonneville AA Fuel Altered, 638 cubic inch. Where have we heard that number before? Big block Chevy, all the best parts just rebuilt. Dynoed at 1,254 horsepower on meth. Nitro methane. 3,000 horsepower. Which is a speed. good meth. You can do that kind of thing. I was going to say, it was like, don't do meth. <laughs> uh, <laughs> your teeth won't rot out, but you will kill yourself. Uh, four, speed, four speed, quick change rear end with all the gear ratios, triple disc clutch. This has run 264 miles per hour at Bonneville on meth. Price includes the spare parts, trailer, barrels of nitro, and methanol. Sell. They can also sell it without the engine. If you're in the Los Angeles area, go check it out. So this thing has all of the land speed stuff. It's got the disc, you know, streamliner wheels, streamliner front end. Just, just very clean, clean looking build here. I, I'm well, you, surprised at how you cheap could this go is. over 200 miles an hour. You could outrun Chris's airplane for oh, by a, a mile. Long way. <laughs> oh, no, for a long way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and then you're out of gas. I, I, I and, and if you don't know this, Racing Junk actually has an entire section of land speed cars, including several that were on the East Coast. Uh, because there's a an old that Maxton runway. Mile is, is a yeah. huge there's event a, out here. Yeah. Yeah. The, is that the one in Maine? Uh, no, I think that's in the Carolinas. Carolinas, I think. yeah. There's one. In, there's the one in the Carolinas, and then there's also one in Maine. Uh, old abandoned Strategic Air Command runways that are long, like three miles, and they're long enough to do these. Uh, Andy Nelson of GRM fame uh, does those. Yeah, yeah. Just so as, as always, free to post, free to browse. Don't go doom scrolling. Go happy scrolling. Yeah, Raising the Max and Miles is a good one because I think it's 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 a standing start. <laughs> so. That's only fun. Nice. Anyway, I right, go go buy it, everybody. LA. Uh racingjunt.com. Uh join, check it out. It's free to check out, but get the membership. How much is the membership this December? They were they're still oh. running the Christmas special metal? Yeah, it's like 20 bucks. Yeah, it's yeah, ridiculous. It's great. Wow. Yeah, yeah. All right. If you anticipate selling a car next year, it's worth it. It's worth it because you get to you unlimited pictures in your ads. Anyway, go on, Chrissy Yellow. Listen again. up, Ray Bertone! Ah, Chris and Chrissy showed off their new auto trailer winch. Was it on the Instas? I think I saw it. I think I saw it. Somewhere. It was everywhere. It was everywhere. Uh, Chris Egan had a new uh, had an option. Our new to us trailer came with a winch controller cable long enough to use while sitting in the car being pulled. It's life changing when you're loading a car alone. Our old trailer required the magic screwdriver trigger to short the pins together at the winch. Nice. Oh. That's safe. That's janky. Well, let me say, is the Earl of Jank. That's janky. <laughs> it does crack me up how so many people in this hobby just come to accept these things. It's no problem at all. <laughs> it's, fine. it's easier to, to just use a screwdriver than it is to fix it. So I'm just going <laughs> to. Well, I'm pretty sure the last time we pushed the Z into the car, it was because we couldn't, we didn't have the controller. Like I left the controller at home, so not that surprised. Is now, not surprised even a little bit. Yeah, now it is like in the it is bolted to the uh, to the to the trailer, so I won't lose it next time. That's the one thing I'm worried about with mine is it's a small little remote, just it's great wireless. It's really entirely. cute. Yeah, but you don't so, have a wired switch. No, that's it. Just this wireless oh. remote. So I I have it hooked to the uh, the paper towel dispenser that lives above the trailer. And I figured that's a nice, safe place to keep it where we won't go anywhere. But it's should, it's needs like a little box. I was gonna say you should put it on a keychain and like it's on know, a like, keychain, like split like a split ring and like it's split on ring that. it onto something. Oh, wow. yeah. or or just get like you know go the uh, bathroom at the gas station route and just attach it to something. Attach to a brick. Um, yeah, uh, obnoxious. Just some giant. <laughs> a ruler? You're, That's what you're talking about. A ruler. A stick, a cap, a rock. That's yeah. funny. You know, brightly painted and 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 i i will throw this this uh, additional addendum in there because we're about to talk about it you could just weld something up it's true sure out of aluminum so yeah. it'd be huge and lightweight wow just like the rest of the trailer yep 
Okay. Uh, I already we're... said thanks for the cookies, but I'll now say it officially. Chrissy and Chrissy's mom and all of the little happy elves at Chrissy's mom's we house. We were little happy elves. <laughs> thanks for the cookies. And thanks Welcome. for being good listeners. Hi, Mom. Main topic time! I was about to yell. I went back and everything. So we are talking about welding uh, for being the kid who grew up with the uh, holding the material for my grandfather going, ow, it's shocking me. Ow, it's shocking me. Ow, it's shocking me through the concrete floor. Um, I kind of grew up behind the totally terrible, non-flashy masks, not learning how to weld really good, but just really kind of basically figuring out the basics uh to hang out with chris and a lot of other people who weld better than me so i i'm getting a little off my touch but we're going to be talking about a new kind of welding that i've never seen other than on tv and that's tig welding so if you're a hobbyist welder out there and you want to think about making the leap into the dime stacking aluminum processing rainbow I, I i don't even really know how it makes those rainbows but let's talk about it we're going to talk about getting into tig welding uh anybody want to say anything about welding before i jump in and do some explanation go for it nope okay here it later. goes welding in general for those of you who don't aren't really sure what's going on uh this is turning uh, electricity into fire that melts metal and glues metal together. It is a, a large voltage, uh, very hot process. You've seen it with the masks, but we're gonna talk about some different kinds of welding just to get into the basics before we talk about TIG, which I guess is like the ultimate kind of welding. I guess. I don't they know. each have their own uses. They're sure, all useful sure. in their own ways. Uh, and I don't even know enough to answer that question. So I do know this, though. There are certain terms that we're probably going to be using tonight that I'm going to make sure we all understand. Uh, wire or consumable is the part of the material that builds the weld. So uh, if you're in a wire feed welder like the MIG, it's going to be the thing that shoots through the gun, blah, 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 blah. The shield is the part that keeps the oxygen away from the fire to make sure it is nice and clean there are probably other things out there that are other different kinds of chemicals maybe chris can explain that but i know in mig and uh stick welding that they're trying to remove the oxygen um the arc is the fire that melts the wire uh, but it also melts the stock that you're welding and the wire or consumable to make the pool and the pool is basically the molten part of metal that ends up cooling off and becoming the weld. Um, I think I covered all the things we need to cover in the terms. Chris, any other terms you're going to be using there that you think you should define? Yeah, and I'll do it as we go. Okay. <clears throat> yep. Um, I'm going to start with the basic. The one that I held for my grandfather was a giant old machine. He learned to weld while building the uh, USS Kansas City uh, right next to the old Arizona. I'm, I'm sorry, the USS New Jersey, which Mental loves, and I have a picture of right over there. And uh, that was arc welding or stick welding. And that is like the old school, uh, you know, like a the gun, the, the, the thing in your hand looks like a, looks like a clamp from a from a like a jumper cable and you put a rod in it and the rod is actually a flux covered material flux is what ends up being the shield as it burns so there's no gas the rod and the shield and the wire are all one it is the oldest it is the easiest it is the cheapest version it is also messy because when you use flux which is basically a explosive material that eats all the oxygen out of the weld it splatters and gets very messy um, but the good thing about a good old stick welder is you can weld anything you want to weld copper you get a copper stick you want to weld aluminum you get an aluminum stick you want to weld steel get a steel stick you got something special they a special alloy they probably have a special stick to weld it so the machine can basically do everything except be clean that's arc Okay, uh, let's start off talking more about MIG because MIG is the one I think people are most familiar with. That's the most common hobby welding is MIG. Um, so, and that is the, the 
where you have, um, it's primarily for steel. You can MIG aluminum if you have what's called a spool gun, which is a different way to feed the wire out. But in a normal wet MIG, you have a big spool of wire in the welder. You have a ground clamp. And the what happens is when you squeeze the trigger, the wire comes out of the gun and it touches a little metal collar inside the gun. And that is what electrifies it when you pull the trigger. So you pull the trigger, it activates the spool to start moving. You, the tr it activates the electricity in the gun. When the electrified wire touches the workpiece that is grounded, it creates a short circuit and it starts to melt that wire. And that wire is what then creates the additional material and the heat and whatnot to make a weld in a MIG gas. It MIG is typically shielded by a gas. It doesn't have to be. There is flux core MIG where the wire has something called flux in it in the core. It's what, you know, clever name. And yeah, that, that's a different way to keep it clean. But normally the shielding gas is to, you know, to keep the oxygen and things away from it. It's usually an argon carbon dioxide mix. Mm -hmm. And it flows through the tube. So yes. like it all basically comes to your hand and goes through the gun. Yeah. All you need with MIG is one hand on the gun and you know, one hand on the material. And that's, that's it. Um, you don't even need the second hand on the material. I mean, plenty of us who've done plenty of making have done it. Like I can only reach just back in there with one hand and mm. zap and That's the best you can do. And uh, this is different from arc because it's being wire fed in the arc, the stick weld, the stick is the material. So it gets shorter and shorter. So even though you're still doing it with one hand, you have to start like two feet away and then you slowly get yeah. next to it. And when it's like a, it's like a cigarette burning. And when you get close to the end, you got to put in a new stick. It's called filler rod. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Old stick welding is like, you, you can practically do it. And actually they do in third world countries, a car battery and jumper cables. Mm -hmm. Really? That's all you really need. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's, that's the basics of the MIG. The, and you, as you are, feeding the wire you can change the voltage and change the wire speed and all this changes how much heat goes into the material and how much filler goes into the material that's why you know sometimes you want because you need the right heat to burn into the base stock and melt the wire um, and not too much wire not too little it's a, it's a fine process that you learn over time jeff and i'm just going to say that because the wire is constantly moving you basically don't have to stop I mean, you have to stop with the duty you cycle your machine, blah, 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 blah. But this is why many professional welders out there will all use this kind of welder because in stick welding and some other kinds, you're constantly changing your materials while the, once you get burning with the MIG, you can keep You burning. just keep going. Yep. yep. Absolutely. And it's, it really is the easiest. And it, you can MIG weld over some dirty stuff. As long as it's not too dirty, you can MIG weld over some gaps if you know what you're doing. It is fairly forgiving. So that's important to know. All right. TIG. Tungsten inert gas. That's what TIG stands for. Um, and the, the difference is that there is a tungsten electrode. That's why it's tungsten. And inert gas is because there's a gas shielding around it at all the time. You cannot do this without gas. And it is primarily argon that you're using, not a mix. Um, the machines run on either AC or DC power, alternating current or direct current. And therefore, inverters are often needed to switch that current around from AC to DC, because what comes out of the wall is AC. DC is what you want for steel with TIG. AC is what you want for aluminum. Just the way they work. The gun design is very different on the TIG versus the MIG. The MIG, it's just, it, it fits in your hand, it's bent at the tip, it's got a tip that unscrews, and that's it, one hand on the trigger, that's it. TIG, there are many, there are more pieces that go into it than the MIG, and they have different purposes. So you've got the base stock of the gun, the gas flows through it and electricity flows through it. Into that, you have the collet, which is where the electrode sits, which they have something similar in a MIG torch. The tungsten electrode is what fits in the collet. And that is what is the kind of funnels the electricity. That is where the source of the electricity to create the arc. And then there is a, a cup that sits over that, like Jeff called it a shield for MIG. It's called a cup, a gas cup for TIG. And... Then there's a backing rod that sits over the back of it 
to hold the backside of the tungsten electrode because tungsten electrode is long because it's, it is a consumable as well. And that is what kind of holds it all in place is the, the back. And so there can be a trigger on this to turn the welder on and off, but often what there's used is a foot pedal instead to operate that because you do need both hands to take. There is no one-handed take. Just Does that. the foot, sorry, Beth, if you have a question, go ahead. I just had a question about the foot pedal. Does the foot control just the electricity or does it move everything? Like what is it, what is the foot doing? It is opening the gas flow or it is telling the machine to start the process yeah. of opening the gas flow, turning on the voltage, and you can actually regulate the voltage with the pedal. So you like, like full throttle, less throttle as to how much and that electricity changes the voltage okay so but that also moves the gas it opens the valve for it the opens gas the gas flow and the gas got flow it. is either on or off got it be my yep. only contribution to this discussion but as i understand it the ability to vary the electrical demand and the speed of the wire as you're welding unlike a conventional mig welder where you're having to make those adjustments on the machine is the attraction in addition to all the materials of a TIG welder, because it allows you to adjust the material and electrical flow on the fly as you need more of it to get those perfect kind of clean welds. Or am I way yes, off but, No, yes, in general, but there's more. And later on, we'll talk about the real world differences between the two and using them. And and I, I should have started off with this. I do not profess myself to be an expert in TIG welding. I started this week, but I had to do a lot of research and learn a lot of trial and error on my own to figure this out. And I wish someone had just told me the basics of this stuff to start off with. That would have saved me some time and speed. All right. Um, so you have to assemble all this together and you want a different cup sizes, change the shape and size of the arc and are there, you use different cup sizes for different material, like how, how big a space you're welding in. And we'll talk more about changing the shape of the arc later and with the cup. The, the tungsten electrode is also adjustable, and the amount that it sticks out beyond the cup varies based on your cup size and what you're working on. So, so the, the, if I understand this correctly, the, the, the gas basically collects inside the cup, and the and, electrode and also goes through the cup. Everything goes through the cup. Everything goes through the cup. Got it. Yep. It's like on the MIG, you've got the little shield. It's usually copper at the end, and the gas flows through that, and the wire sticks out of that. This, it's, it's similar, but the tungsten is not the consumable it is not the filler like in a mig where the the wire is the electrode and it is the filler in this one we got two separate things got it all right so um the arc on this is different like here's what on a mig what melts the metal is the actual wire touching the workpiece that is what melts the metal in the tig that's not the case at all you are creating an arc with your gun to your workpiece, which is obviously ground clamp on the workpiece. And you don't have to have any filler rod at all because then it uses filler rods like stick welding. So it's a, a, a three foot piece of wire that you are manually feeding into this at times. That is your filler rod. The arc on a TIG starts where you, there's two kinds of ways to start an arc. You don't just pull the trigger. On some cars, they're called scratch start TIG. You actually have to touch the tungsten to the workpiece, turn the voltage on, and then pull it away a little bit. And that's how you start it, just because you have to actually physically so touch it. Similar to arc welding, that's how you start yep. it with a stick. Right. And this mm -hmm. one, I've got a high frequency welder, which is able to start an arc with the tungsten not touching the workpiece, which is a cleaner and easier way to do it. So, so what you do is you hold the tungsten electrode about an eighth of an inch from what you're working on at about a 20 degree angle back, and then you turn the voltage on. And then even just to start to learn to practice, you just do this on a piece of metal and just move it at a constant speed. And as you vary your speed and vary your distance away from the metal, you will see a different weld puddle on the workpiece that you're working on and you're not adding any filler rod you're just melting the workpiece a little tiny bit as you're going over it just with the heat hmm. and okay. you practice that by you know you really try it try going at one spot try doing a different angle try doing faster try doing further away and you'll see the difference in the size of the weld pool and you know lines that you leave along the metal the arc of it is comes from 
know, the electricity comes from the tungsten, jumps the gap to the workpiece, and the shielding gas changes the shape of it. And so it's it's the it's the shielding gas and the shape of the tungsten that changes the size and shape of the arc. The arc is not just like a little lightning bolt. It's actually like a cone that sticks out from it. So the bigger your gas cup, the wider the cone can be. And if your tungsten is sharp, it actually gives it a, a, a more of a upside down martini glass shape, which is good. If you get a ball, it's kind of more of a, a red wine glass shape and it's okay, a little harder I'm to control. Okay, I'm getting this. Yeah, right? like, so yeah, like a tri triangular it. sides versus bulbous sides. Right. So all these things matter to change the shape of whatever this, this arc that you are making has a shape and that changes how you can do the weld and, and you want different kinds of shapes of arcs for different things you are doing. I have found this to be challenging now because the tungsten that's there is supposed to, it, it, they say it's better if you have it sharp. I find it really hard to keep it sharp because if you get too close to the workpiece with it, it, it like picks up, it picks up metal. No, it oh, picks it picks up, up like slag. Yeah. Okay. And so then I have to take it off and sharpen it. And you can only you and um, cleanliness is incredibly important in in TIG. And you can only use if you use a, a, your steel grinding wheel on your tungsten electrode, you can actually contaminate it and have poor quality welds because of it. So you have to have a grinder that specifically you will only use for your tungsten electrode. So I have huh. one on its way from Amazon that I'm it attaches to the Dremel that's specifically for this. And, and what right is now, it like? Is it sandpaper? Like just there's no like a, metal it's like in a it? Metal, it's like a metal grinding wheel, but you don't want any other metals in it to do this. Okay. Oh, oh okay. We, so we, there's some shit. Metal yeah, there's has some... put up the electrode tips yep. on a tungsten. And there's TIG there's wall. some some things you actually want a bulbous tip for, apparently, which you can kind of just make that. And I've inadvertently made it many times. <laughs> 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 So, yeah. so, so the, the tungsten tip, which now I understand moves is, is pointed through the cup. Yeah. Like stays there. Like it doesn't, it yeah. doesn't become part of the weld. Correct. It doesn't melt. It sh no, it should, it gets orange eventually, but it should not melt. It actually should last a fair amount of time. Okay. Um, but you know, if you have to grind it as often as I do, to see it's, it's going <laughs> away more quickly because I'm new to all this. Yeah. 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 So that was something I had no idea. I had no idea how the arc was made. I had no idea that there were shapes in this. I had no idea how the shapes were made. Yeah. Metal, no idea that, any of that stuff. Put up that shapes again. Yeah, those Just, pictures were really helpful, actually, yeah. because I, I was trying to follow, but not being able to look at something when you're trying to shapes, make... Shapes of the tips or shapes of the yeah. gas? Shapes of the tips. All the above. Oh, no, the, the, yeah, the gas. The, gas, the one that had the... It had orange. the... Yeah, it had the orange things in it. Oh. Not yeah, that one right there. You can see Sorry. The, the pointier it is, it, it changes the shape versus if you just have a flat one, you've got like no actual real room to work with it. If it's flat, you have to have an angle to have something to work with. So okay, let's that's... try and explain this visually yeah, Thank you. for the people who are listening on only on the audio. So it's like the, imagine a sharp needle versus like a pencil point, you know, like a, like a golf pencil versus like the, the skinnier pencil. It's so like an eraser. Sure. But I'm, I'm saying like, that's what the electrode looks like. Go back, go back up to the top there, pencil. Go back to the, to the things there. There we go. Ooh, ooh. The, the orange ones. I, w I wanted the orange ones. There we go. So yeah. So it has like a 15 degree angle or a 35 degree or 45 degree angle is what's in there or a 60 degree angle. So the less pointy the tip is, the smaller the mushroom of fire that is creating the pool to a point like the mushroom shape changes like yeah. at 60 degrees it's like a, a cone but at 15 it's like a it looks like a valve like, like a, a valve a, yeah 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 right yeah. it goes down but then spreads out but this matters as because when you're adding your filler rod to add material to this you want to add it to the orange part not touch the electrode because when you touch the electrode it sticks the electrode and yes. messes up your thing yes get it, get it. and, and eventually it. you can actually stick your electrode into your weld and then it's stuck and you can't get it out and you have to take the electrode out of the gun take some pliers break it off as low as you can because tungsten is very brittle and then 
go clean it up and grind it again to start over. Uh, okay. Ask this, me this how is I know. Starting right. to sound a little tedious. It is. I was excited I, by TIG welding and now I'm afraid of it. It it is it it is there's a solid learning curve here. All right, so that's that's what the arc is. That's how it's formed. That's how the shape is changed. Okay, so now we got to start get the machine set up. I'm, I'm going to talk about a, a good. This is a fairly high end TIG welder we're talking about here. So it has several settings that are totally new to me. The the one that's simple seems like voltage. Okay, great, I got voltage, no problem. But that's the that's the, that's the easiest part. The first thing you set up is pre flow. So after you hit you hit go on the pedal it will turn the gas on for a very whatever set time you have it to clean purge the the gun and clean the area before you actually start an arc and this is usually like half a second it'll do that next is that's like the, uh clicking the <clears throat> clicking the tongs before you actually go to the food you know like, exactly yep next is the uh starting amp it doesn't just usually don't go right to I'm going to use 120 amps. You don't go right to 120 or volts, whatever, whatever is volts. Don't go right to 120 um, because it's it's you need to kind of warm things up a little bit. So you usually have a starting voltage. Then you have a ramp time, like I'll say a, like 30 volts starting voltage, one and a half second ramp time, and then 120 volts actual normal full throttle voltage. So you want to start an arc, you hit the pedal all the way down, half a second, gas flows out. And then for one and a half seconds, you've got 20 volts. And then you get 120 volts. That's when you really start doing your welding. And and you're doing this all with the pedal or you're setting up the machine to do it automatically? You set up the machine to do this all automatically for you. Got it. Okay. Yep. Okay. There's also then a ramp time down as to how long it takes for it to just gradually reduce the voltage, which is actually better because it, it cools the weld off better that way. If you just abruptly cut the voltage, the weld go, cools off so fast it can get brittle. So it's you ramp it down. And then there is a post flow of how long the gas is going to flow after the voltage stops, which you want to do to cool down and protect your tungsten. And that's like three to five seconds usually. So there's a whole lot going on when you push the pedal. But you could push it, start it, and then you know wait a second before you really go and get welding. Depends on how good the, how thick the material is underneath it. But you're just heating just the base material at that point. So, so you basically kind of like pre-fire, preheat mm -hmm. the gun before you start moving. Yep, essentially. Okay. Um, I think I've already talked about all the parts of the machine, the pedal, all this. Okay. Uh, obviously, there's a, a argon tank. There's a gas regulator. You want the gas flow to be um, apparently between 10 and 20 cubic feet per hour is what it's called. So you turn it on and, and you turn the step on the pedal, and there's a regulator that shows you what that flow is. So, so actually using this thing. Um, uh, first off, everything has to be clean, like perfectly clean, like grinder down to shiny clean is really how it works best. Um, and you're using two hands all of the time for this. There's just no, there's no one hand anything. So the, it's hard to do this in weird spots. Um, now, our, our welder does have a finger trigger that you can use to do this. And there are additional more advanced settings that I'm not going to get into today. This is the basics. So to actually do this, like say I'm, I'm doing uh, I, what I did mostly on my, my practice project was I made a new fireplace grate because ours was dead. And I made it entirely out of scrap roll cage tubing because the old fireplace grate over time sagged with the heat, but I, I stuck a piece of roll cage tubing under it to stop it from sagging and the roll cage tubing never even deflected. So I know even though it was glowing orange in the fireplace, so I knew it can handle it. Plus I had a lot of just small bits of roll cage tube and lying around. So, Don't we all? Right. And so Thanks, I thought this Jeff, bend another right. one. Right. So this is a great way for me to just practice on something that's completely uh, doesn't matter in any way, shape or form. No one's going to care what it looks like, but I got to learn something. So I did a lot of roll cage tubing welding potentially. So, and I could have welded this up in like an hour, easy, you know, with a MIG, just zap, 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 because I did a lot of MIG. But this took me, it's taking me quite a long time because I'm learning. 
first, yeah, everything has to be perfectly clean. Fitment matters a lot. I can easily bridge a gap of a quarter inch with the MIG. Not a big deal. This, much harder to do. So you've got to get the fitment right. So those those two things are, are I learned very quickly. So what you do is you hold your tip angled back about 20 degrees from where you're going to go. And this is always a push forward weld. It's not a drag back. Maybe you can do kind of whatever you want. This is always push forward. So you start your arc and you can just hold it and run it kind of in a straight line between your materials, which when you're doing a roll cage tubing, it's kind of hard to do, or you can move it around. So the point is you want to heat everything up and then add filler rod, but you don't just add and keep feeding. You kind of dab some in, let that create a puddle between the base stock and the filler rod. And then this is, you know, I've always heard the term in welding, move the puddle in MIG. Like you can do that. Okay. It's fine. This is the definition of move the puddle. Really your puddle is not just the wire anymore. Your puddle is whatever you're doing with the torch and the combination of filler and base stock that you have. So you start it up. <clears throat> you, it, once it gets hot enough, you add a, you dab into the filler rod into the cone of the cone of fire, but not touching the electrode. A bit melts off. That performs the puddle. It starts to move. As you back the rod out, it kind of drags the puddle forward. As you move the torch, it drags the puddle forward. Once you've kind of filled you know, that spot is done and you need more filler, dab the rod in again, dab the rod in again, dab the rod in again. And you move the torch around a little bit to put the heat where you want it. And you just add the filler rod as you're going to create the additional material you need to weld those two things together. You can do a thing called fusion welding, which is like if you butt weld two flat stuff pieces of stock together and you could just run down the middle of it with just the torch and it will just melt both base stocks into each other, but it's not a great weld. You really do want to have some filler material put in there. But I have used just the torch to kind of reshape some welds that I have made that I didn't think were exactly where I wanted it or didn't look great. I'll just use just the torch. It remelts the filler rod and changes it a little bit. And then you kind of dab a spot of filler right at the end to kind of clean it up. I'm going to ask this. You may not know already. With yeah, that, that's a, See, that's a good angle that he's running there. It's about, what, 20 degrees facing backwards. Mm -hmm. And you can see almost see the shape of the of the, the fire there. It's, it's a little smaller than that in real life. You can't really get a good picture of it. And then you dab in that filler material. And that's how you create the stack of dimes look is that's every time you're adding the filler rod is that, and you can change how close the dimes are stacked and things by how often you do that. And you can do that just with physically doing it, or either you can change some welders have pulse settings where it'll go high voltage, low voltage, high voltage, low voltage, high voltage, low voltage, and you can set how often it does it. So say if you set it for like one second, you're like on off one second, one second while the torch is constantly moving. If you do it three seconds, you're just making much bigger puddles every time as you move them along yeah and that's an actual weld i did it's not perfect but i feel like that after like a, an evening and a half of doing this i feel like oh, that's not too bad I, that, that's really good if you ask me i mean but these welds are extremely <laughs> clean compared to a mig oh yeah like yeah. it's 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 really pretty yeah and i'm going to get into that next is the differences um good i was yeah, going to so ask Really, the, that's what it comes cons. down to the welding is you are you are creating a hot spot that is making a puddle somewhat out of the base metal and you are adding the filler by touching the cone of fire, but not the electrode and creating a puddle when you and then adding more filler as you go and you need more. That's how it works. And so you just drag it along, keep dabbing in the rod, dabbing in the rod, and then you keep having to move your hand on it. And then eventually you run out your little, like, you know, stubby pencil of a rod. It's like, it's, it's hot. Ow. And then you're going to you know, do something else. Yeah. So uh, what's the cycle on, on, on this? Like, like a duty cycle? Yeah. Like a duty cycle, like a, like a MIG can only run for so long and then it needs to cool down. Yeah. I didn't look up what it was on this one. I don't. You know haven't exactly. really gotten there. Like you haven't. Yeah. You haven't. Okay. 
No, I mean, like in, you're, you're not welding long enough that you think you've worn correct. out the duty cycle. And this is also a pretty high-end machine, so its yeah, duty yeah, cycle yeah. is probably pretty good. Eventually, though, <clears throat> they, if you want higher duty cycles, they make liquid-cooled torches to oh. keep it going. Um, so that's, I think, the, you know, the next step if you're doing more the, for longer, because the torch, it does get hot. And then that's, that's really significant. All right. So the real world differences in practice that I have found between TIG and MIG. Uh, MIG is much faster. MIG is much dirtier. MIG is much more forgiving. And MIG, I don't think, is quite as good a quality of weld if you're doing it right. So TIG, it's definitely slower, without a doubt. Um, it is definitely more fiddly as far as cleanliness and fitment, like we already talked about. It Because you're going more slowly, though, and because you're focusing very carefully and because you're using two hands, it gets, it's almost automatically a better quality weld because you're really getting it just right. And it, it, it's, it's more perfect each time. Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, it's harder to fill stuff with TIG. I'm sure that as you get better, it'll be, well, it won't be hard, as hard, but it's hard for me so far. Um, but there's no spatter. There is no you know, flying sparks everywhere. Nothing. None of that. It is very clean and nice and precise. As and, but, you know, it's that's why like it's best done like on a table. Like I'm sitting there at a table on a chair. Oh wait, wait! I have that picture too. Yep. With my foot on the pedal, with the work on the table. Like if I was doing a roll cage, it would I I would have to learn how to do this again almost to figure to do it with the finger trigger and to like be able to use two arms to do these things in weird spots. It's difficult to do. I, I think you need to get a more comfortable chair. That chair's perfect, actually. It's just <laughs> that chair's enough. great. I love that chair. Yeah. It's just enough to sit on, and you know, you, your your foot is on the pedal the whole time too. So. It's tough. Uh, so, so welding table, let's talk welding table. Cause we never really use a welding table with yeah. MIG. We're like on our back on, you know, laying in yeah. a prone position, crawling under the cage. Turn off the yeah. screen chair. Um, Turn off the screen chair. Oh, sorry. Turn off the screen chair. <laughs> uh, well, I bought this because I knew TIG is needing to be more precise and I didn't want to do this on my knees on the ground. That's really and, hard to use the foot pedal when you're doing it that way. And the so table, yeah, the table is part of the process, right? Cause you it can, can be, like, you can put yeah. the ground right on the table, right? Yeah. Yeah. You ground the table and it goes through the table, through the material, through all that stuff. If you want, I've been, I was trying to ground the material cause I thought it would be a better quality. And then once in well, a while, cause that's times, what you do with Mick. Right. So a couple of times I moved the, ground off of the material to move it and stuck it to the table so i didn't lose it and i forgot i did it and i started to weld and i didn't notice until later i went oh the ground's over there oh that worked fine okay yeah yep uh, now there are a few safety differences i do want to mention of things that i have noticed Ooh, ooh safety this. talk right uh, well first off we noticed we, we talked about the splatter so that's nice it's safer that tig is there's there's no none of the splatter that yeah. gets everywhere. Um, but the arc is much more powerful in TIG. So it gets really hot more quickly. So you have really have to be careful of your heat. And especially you have to be careful of the heat is that heat comes out of the gun. Like if MIG, if you are done with your heat, you, you let the trigger go, you pull it away and it, done, no heat. Like that's it. TIG, yeah, the material I, is still hot, but the yeah. gun is not. Oh, right. crazy hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But still, like, there's no more. Like, so there's a time something got too hot. I pulled off the pedal. I lifted the torch up. There is still basically fire Flames shooting out of shooting the torch. Out of your torch. It's not really flame, but it's the hot gas through the thing. And it actually, um, uh, one of my newer, thinner TIG gloves um, got, it, it shrunk a little bit in the spot where that hit it. <laughs> because wow. it's that hot. And I'm not used, I wasn't used to that, that there's still heat out of the gun. So like when you stop, you have to keep the gun pointed at the work because that's part of cooling it off so that it doesn't get brittle. Keep the gun right there. You can't just pull it away. Doesn't that doesn't work? You just gotta let go and just ride it out. You, you basically you pull, like lift the pedal and that and then wait. But leave it there. Yeah. Because if you pull it and it pointed to anything, you are just putting fire at wherever you point it until it shuts off. Okay. Okay, interesting. As it as it ramps down, as the yeah, it, it does goes its on, little ramp down stuff. procedure, just like you talked about. Yeah. Oh, that's a great picture, mental of uh, 
of the cone of fire out of the tip. It says that the orange part is the tungsten. The part above it is the gas cap. And then that is the the shape of your arc, which in this case looks like an upside down martini glass, more or less. Yeah. Very cool. Um, other safety differences, because the arc is so much stronger, you're going to need your helmet set on like the darkest setting, like minimum 12. Like if anything more, like mine, I have mine set all the way as it goes as dark. It's like 13. I would actually probably prefer it a little bit darker. So I need a new welding helmet. Anyway. Yeah, you need a better one, welding one, helmet. One yeah. of mine is getting iffy. So I need a better one anyway. So I'm going to get one that goes darker for take. Oh, so that's- oh, uh, young Chris Egan had an, had an opinion about this and he listens to the show yeah. and told me all about it. Chris Egan, I, I don't think I have your cell phone number. Uh, hit us up. Tell us what kind of good welding helmets are out there. Yeah. He, he told us something about a certain optic that was the one to get. And if you get that one, you're good. Um, like other, other good ones I've used, Bill has their, uh, Bill has a top of the line Vulcan one, which is Harbor Freight's good brand, but that was very comfortable. It was big face shield. It was great. Uh, so the picture of metal showing there is when you pull the tungsten too far away from the workpiece. Oh, it just creates a giant flame ball. Yeah. Until, a until flame. it goes away, but yeah, then you yeah. still have the heat of the gas going through the gun. It's mostly, it's not the, the gas that's hot, but the gun is super heated yeah, and yeah. you're just throwing fire at things. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so also the same thing, it's bright. It's a really, um, really bright arc. You cannot get away with having uncovered skin facing it. Like in MIG, yeah, okay, you can do it in t shirt. Okay, fine. You know, if you're doing it all for two days in a t shirt, you might get a slight sunburn, but that's it. This, no, you've, you've got to be covered. All of your skin that might see the arc has got to get covered, or you will get a flash burn. Hmm. Like, not just from a real quick one, maybe, but if you're like doing your anything- neck. Like you yeah. had, well, I guess like you that's had why it. when the, the mask goes and it goes down low, and especially yeah. if you're working underneath you, it doesn't, you don't really get there, but some people oh. do wear neck gaiters on their really? mask. Okay. Yeah. To I've seen protect that. Protect their neck from the flash burn of the weld. Wow. Oh, mental has okay. got all the pictures, right? You're just, yeah. Oh, yeah. You see that yeah, that's a great yeah. picture of, the, of like the guy's watch tan from weld burns. And that looks pretty bad. Yeah, it looks Oof. really bad. So yeah, be be careful. It is a much and, stronger arc. And this the guy at Eastwood told me this when I was buying the material. He's like, I said, I'm learning how to TIG. He's like, you ever welded before? I said, yeah, I've done a lot of MIG, but never TIG. He's like, all right, mask on, dark as you go, no skin showing, it will burn you. And that's the the picture that we showed there with the guy at the watch. It it looks like a super fast sunburn. That's not, that wasn't material that landed on him. Mm-hmm. That's just radiant heat exposure. UV, it's UV light is what it is. Yeah. yeah. There it is. Very um, interesting. So yeah, in general, like I'm, I'm pleased with them getting to learn it and I'm doing all this on mild steel aluminum. There are different techniques and things that you need to do. Okay. I'm, I'll get there later. I'm making the fireplace. Great. I was going to make us a new fuel cart out of steel. Ooh. Learn how to do that. Right. Um, and then I was going to move to aluminum with in my work in my trailer. I'm going to make a workbench. So I have I have the angle iron. I just need, to, but that's nice easy welds there. Angle and aluminum. I, yes. Case. Yeah, that's true. Angle aluminum. Not angle then, iron. You're absolutely right. Thank you. And then I'm going to make a, a beach cart for Chrissy's parents. So this is these are all my TIG welding projects that are going to take me the next you know month or two to really learn how to. That's take. not a cage or something that's yeah. structural and important. Yeah, and these people are things can. That, yeah, they're going up gradually in importance as I make them, as I learn <laughs> or, how to do Or it. more visible, your welds will be more visible to more that people. Too. Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. What this is a questions, lot. thoughts, anything? I know it's a lot, but this is all stuff I've learned so, so my, in the last four days. So and my question the, is, yeah, what has been, like if someone out there is thinking about making the jump, you're, you're, I assume, you know, you're, you're a very, very good MIG welder. You're watching video. What are you doing? You're watching videos. You're reading the books. What are you, what are you doing? All of the you're, above. All of the above. Okay. Yeah. There's East, Eastwood had a great um, video about setting the welder up, which I didn't see until after I'd already started to start mine up. So, uh, you know, their, their, their support is good. I watched a few other videos. The best one was uh, weld.com had a TIG 101 starter video that went through a lot of the common early mistakes that people make. I should have started there. After showing you, well, I did. I did that before I even 
tried to strike an arc. So um, those are so, so those are the two best ones that I saw of, of the other ones that I saw, and I read plenty too about it before. And do I you think your average did. weekend mechanic, weekend welder, could teach themselves this in a month, in a year, in a what? Yeah, you're like any new complicated skill. You're going to have to put some significant effort to it on the steep part of the learning curve. Like almost anybody can grab a MIG and kind of sort of, it's like coloring really you just kind yeah, of draw yeah, yeah, on the yeah. spot you want to draw as, as long as someone sets it up for you ahead of time. Yeah. You can, you can, you can stick some metal together. Maybe it won't be the best, but you kind of can. Yeah, and and as you, you can practice to get it nicer. Yeah. It's, it's take, just hand control. It definitely takes more thought ahead of time, more research ahead of time, more understanding ahead of time about how it works to be able to do it properly. And really, once I totally had the mental aha of, oh, this is what they really say when they say move the puddle, got it. And that kind of changed what I was doing and made it all work and kind of come together much better. And when you had to run out of puddle, put more water in essentially. That's the filler rod. Got it. Uh, here's my last thought. Do you think this will, like you will change to this machine? I mean, you're always going to have the MIG there. Do you foresee yourself going, oh, 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 MIG? I haven't touched that machine in forever. No. No. Because okay. so much stuff, the MIG is just so easy and fast. And that's great. But I I'm, I'm, think I'm primarily going to use the TIG for aluminum. Or if I'm trying to be fancy on something that look that's going to be visible. and Like, like nice. an or, intake or for... pipe, pull out the MIG or the TIG. Yeah. But the cage is still going to be MIGged. Yeah. It sounds like, like you, can you make a cage with MIG? With TIG, I'm sorry? Yeah, oh, totally. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. just sounds like, like it's easier to do things on the table, but yeah. if you like can. Maybe I would do the main hoop with the TIG. On, you know how we take the main hoop? We yeah, we sure, sure. We do it on the, do it on the ground. The angle yeah. bar, right, usually on the ground. I totally wouldn't mind doing that on the table with the TIG. It would look great. Okay. Be nice, good quality welds on the main hoop. But when I'm welding upside on your, down, upside down in the, in back the car, seat, yeah, yeah, no chance. <laughs> yeah. The, the lotus position. I think somebody's probably got that on a yeah. bingo card. Yes, yeah, yeah. probably. So, so. And well, and if you set up the machine for aluminum, you're probably not going to want to change it oh, for this steel, machine, right? This machine is so easy to change. Oh, like, okay. okay. You can have 20 presets on it and you just switch between the Push presets. Push A, B. You know, it's, it's really a rotated thing. And yeah, it's, got it. P1 through whatever. And it comes with five already preset on it. And um, yeah, it's you, you can go from one eighth steel to sheet aluminum in. Uh, about 10 seconds more than it takes you to switch work pieces and grab a different rod. So what, you know? what, what do you have to ch you change the tungsten rod? Yeah, no, no. Tungsten is the same. You change your filler rod because you want an aluminum filler oh, rod. Oh, oh filler rod, which is in the other hand anyway. Yeah, yeah. Got it. So your, because and, and your it's water. a really good quality machine. And, and the rod is just a rod. There's nothing yeah, just, just mechanical there. It's just a no. piece of wire in your hand. It's it's which is mine. I have, I have one sixteenth one so far. I think I'd probably be better off with the thickness of stuff I'm working on if I had a, a three thirty seconds. So I actually would like to go get some of those because um, I'm having to use a lot of rods sometimes Stocking to fill some stuffers. of the stuffers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what this is that? Three foot package. Of rods. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Especially okay. when the three-year-old's around opening Christmas presents. Yeah. What is this? Ooh, can I whip this around? Right? Is or my sister and 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 brother-in-law that are they're, they're Star Wars swords, people. kids. Right? They're swords. That's what they are. Okay. Uh, that, those are my questions. I, I'll open up to the crew. This is a lot. This is a lot. This is it feels uh it is a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, but the pictures what, helped and so and I would definitely go what you uh mental was on what yeswelding.com or something like that. But what when welding 101 is what you what's the page you use? Uh weld.com. Weld.com, thank it, it you. Was, it was there, it was on YouTube, but their take 101 video I thought was of the ones that I watched, that was the best. I definitely didn't have a lot of work to do on Friday, and so I watched some welding videos. Well, shall we say link in the show notes? Maybe so. I yeah. I feel well, like this it. is it's really it's that easy. Take one hundred and one, the, the wealth.com one. 
Yeah. I just, I think the pictures are helpful when you're trying to think about all these things. So I'm sure mm -hmm. if you're, if somebody's driving or they're listening and not watching, uh, this is something that they should probably look up just to understand yep. what, what things look like, because it's, uh, it's very different. I'm happy to have it as another tool and another sure. you know, quiver in your, or arrow in your quiver. But I think there is solidly places for both in a, let's call it a, a medium, car medium shop. fabricator, right? Yeah, Hoopty yeah, yeah. car shop. Uh, yeah. I'm going to use it for aluminum and for pretty stuff. I think once I get better at it. Good. Um, Last thing. Cost yeah. difference. Yeah, Ooh, don't don't, don't give me don't give me oh, numbers, yeah. but a decent MIG versus a decent tag plus your consumables. Percentage. Consumables just, are, just give me a percentage of yes, no. Consumables are very similar. Um, I don't know how fast I go through a tank of gas yet. We'll find that out. Um, but the the wire is similar in cost to the filler rod, I think, over time. Um the TIG. I'm trying to compare similar, like the best MIG that Eastwood had compared to this is the best TIG. The TIG is probably 20 to 30% more expensive if you compare similar quality within the lines. I mean, we're talking 600 to 1,000 for the machine, maybe? Uh, 1,000 yeah, to 1,500? Yeah, it is, it is three figures still, but yeah, yeah. barely. Um, where, you know, their best MIG, like a, a MIG 180, I think is six or seven hundred yeah 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 so, okay because i just i oversee my i picked up a new lincoln mig shielded gas uh dual voltage you can do 220 110 and i got mm -hmm. the show discount and then just a, like another discount because they were running a special at the show and i bought an open box and i still spent low four digits yeah yeah. so, yeah. Well, so lincoln put, is lincoln is a little more money than i mean eastwood is bargain price frankly yeah yeah but, but put a tank on it buy some consumables were under two grand oh yeah for, okay well well under yeah, and I have, a, I have a fairly small gas tank but um because it fits in the trunk of the nsx yeah i was the only idiot getting the bigger tank yeah okay that's awesome it. this tell, is great we'll, we'll have another episode later on as i learn more but this is the the starter to how i am learning tick uh and where can someone check out the pictures on the social medias if you end up doing anything? Chrissy is really who I'm asking. Because yeah, I know you don't have them. a clue which no, one they're going on. They'll I'll go send on them to all you guys. You all can put them wherever you are. Sure, right. Or I take them because he's doing stuff and I say, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold that's on, hold a, on. That's a um, much more realistic expectation. That's Chris, exactly what's going to happen. doing stuff. Christy will just put that's it on That's what's the happening. Uh, yes. Story. That's hey, yes. Uh, uh, take, take a picture. picture. Uh, that's exactly what's happening. I Or he doesn't say take a picture. I say, go do something. But that's what I do. I said, I'm the one. I know it. I know it. Yes, we'll take a picture. Sure. And we'll put it, we'll post it. So we'll post your first project. And as you continue with more projects, we'll keep posting just to see what you come up with. And so people can see yeah. what you're, what you're doing. Yeah, Instas and Facebook, probably the best places. Yes. Right. That's where they'll go. Yep. Even on this project, you can totally tell the difference. You can tell where I started <laughs> to where I'm doing. The later. first well versus the third well, right? Oh, yeah. It's like the first pancake. It's coming, it's coming along. Right. Well, you got to learn somewhere. And that's why no one cares about okay. the fireplace. Great just throw look like. out the first pancake. It's just well, you're not going to throw out the first weld, so no, no, but you know, no, but it sounds like well, you I, I learned a lot. I did. I did. I did some practice welds on a scrap piece that yeah. had Good. other practice as welds you on should. Yeah. Yes. No, that's awesome. This is great, great project. I'm so glad that you are using this welder because it sat in the basement for four years, and then well, it took a while to get a 220 plug in the garage. I mean, to be able to sure, do it too, but so. you had it that for was, that too long too. I did, but I had other projects. I was building yeah. other race cars. Like there wasn't every hey now, take a, take a month worth of spare time and learn. All right, all right, right. This is not couples therapy <laughs> counseling. Now our our um our great for our fireplace is, is cinders. It's a very sad pile of metal. Oh, Chrissy, it's... turn turn the computer so you can okay, see. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, this is this is the busted I, I... one. You can't even see it. Oh, you can't see how bad. Yeah, it you're is. gonna have to get fine. up and walk over there. <laughs> no, it's too far. It's too far. Uh it's it's sad. So this is a great project to do. All right. Ready? Now yep. I hate to disappoint everyone, but it's just the tip. Just, just the, the tip. tip. And you're not getting it from Chrissy. Nope.
one of the things we talked about with the additional UV light, but just generally in welding and stuff that you're doing, you're in the garage, you're trying to get that last minute car project done before you have to run back in the house and be joyful and merry. It is completely possible that you are going to burn yourself while welding. And we're going to talk about some safety tips from Welding Mastermind. And we'll have that link in the show notes of how to treat and prevent welding burns. A lot of this seems very basic, but we're going to go over it anyway. The first thing is you want to immediately place any burn skin under cool running water. Uh, if you want to wait a while or you don't run into cold water, what's going to happen is the skin cells are going to continue to burn from the residual heat and it's going to make it worse. This is the so, grossest, just the tip ever. Not even no, I'm kidding, close. Kidding. <laughs> All right. And you're going to want to hold that that arm or that skin under the water for at least 20 minutes. Back in my day, you'd get some crazy old lady that would try to rub butter on the burn, which was horrible because effectively you were cooking yourself. Cold water. So delicious. Now, once you've done that, you're going to assess the burn. And this is where you're going to make that decision. And don't be all Dwayne Johnson about it, okay? You might need to go to the hospital. And if you need to... Here's how you're going to, you need to go immediately if the burn is larger than three or four inches. If it is to your face, your hands, your feet, your genitals, don't act like you've never seen those pictures, or your ears. Now it's the grossest, just a tip ever. If it is blistering in any spot, that is an indication of a second degree burn. You're going to want to do that. Or if it's showing any whitish, like actual white or charring, because now you've entered into the lovely world of third and fourth degree burns. Go to the hospital or go to an acute care. All right. You shouldn't try to tough it out because it is going to further damage the nerves and everything around there and bad scarring, and it will get infected. So just go to the hospital. If you don't need to go to the hospital, if it falls under those minimums, you've got it nice and clean under the cold water. You're going to want to put some antibacterial soap on there. And yeah, it's going to sting. Deal with it. You want to make sure that it is clean because chances are you're going back out of the garage and you're going to do all kinds of nasty, greasy stuff. So you're going to want to bandage it. Use cold packs for any pain. And then you want to make sure that that by using ice and cold packs, you're not getting any more damage to the skin of the nerves. And it is going to be hot to the touch for a while. And you're going to sit there and watch Family Guy and go, ow, 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 because we've all done it. You want to wrap it in a uh, one of those good thin bandages, and you want to regulate that with a cold towel or something like that. And then finally, follow that up with your creams. You're going to want to clean it every day, and you want to have a lot of fresh bandages to keep on top of it to keep that from risking infection. And I have ground more of my skin off than anyone else on this screen right now. And trust me, that's a huge deal. And just get used to the idea that you're going to be throwing away a lot of bandages because you've got to keep your... Uh, skin clean on there. Then you can use some soothing cream and then whatever your cocoa butter of choice. All right. Don't be tough and stupid. If you burn yourself, go to the hospital if you need to, if not take care of it. So then you've got a cool story instead of an actual permanent disfigurement. All I heard is if I burn my genitals, I'm allowed to put cocoa butter on it. No, can I see the middle wrong. part? You heard wrong. If you burn genitals, you go to hospital. <laughs> You, yes, I'm you're sorry. doing something very. I'm just trying to skip the middle the, part. I'm the just trying to get to the cocoa butter on my genitals part. The memory, the, just the mental <laughs> image of Jeff welding with no pants is. <laughs> Don't do that. Especially oh. Meg, it's sparking everywhere. Oh. <laughs> both, both of them. <laughs> Don't. No shielding you know, he's, gas. He's gonna use. He's gonna be a stick welder, so it's gonna be fine. That's right. <laughs> oh, oh, that's all right. This is I, this is actually. Uh, you know what, people? I we joke. And we have all hurt ourselves with the welder. It's a pretty dangerous piece. Take it seriously, everybody. Oh, totally. Yeah, no, that's uh, awful. To, and yeah. Chrissy, that's... sing the song. Don't look at welds. Oh, don't I, look at welds. I was trying to think of like weld with pants on. I'm like, what is the song? Chrissy like, always catches oh. us 
doing a little spark without our welder, without her mask on, and goes, "Don't oh, you weld it. It's just you. <laughs> yeah, don't don't say us, because I walk through the pits when you guys aren't even at the same racetrack, and I sing, "Don't look at welding." I don't know. It's you, Jeff. It's always you. Well, no, okay. So Jeff will has. Oh, are we already going the, here. We I already do, went over this. We don't need. Okay, to Okay, fine, 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 fine. Okay, next, Joe. What we're doing? What are we doing? We know what we're doing. What are we doing? We, what did you get for Christmas? We want to know. I'm I don't so know yet. Excited. It's Christmas not yet Christmas. I know. Uh, it's also time. We're going to talk about our New Year's goals. Uh, we want to hear about what you uh, got for Christmas. We want to know what you're doing for the coming year. Uh, we can't wait to hear from you. Tune in, find out what, about ours, and we might talk about yours if you let us know. We'll also be grading ourselves on how well we accomplished our goals. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, we I are. I believe Chris gave me a very specific challenge. I've got to go back and listen to it because I don't think I got it. I'll have to review when I fell down. <laughs> anyway, uh, music is back this week because I fixed it. Uh, thanks for downloading us. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. We hope you'll join in the world of driving racing and building because everyone can be a racer even you if you enjoyed this podcast subscribe it's totally free if you're watching us on youtube comment down there in the doodly do if you're not if you have questions or show ideas drop a comment on our facebook page uh hit us on the instagram email us at everyone.racers at gmail.com tell us what you got for christmas or what your new year's resolutions are for next week's show uh, you can text us 484-243-0455, excuse me, mental has it. He wants pictures of your junk, but not the part that you put the, Never mind. Find us on Instagram, Twitter, everyone.racers, YouTube, Facebook under everyone racers, even Reddit slash E1R. Anything new on the Reddit page this week, mental? I posted up the Lowrider show and some other stuff that I had, uh, yeah, so yeah, check out our yeah, we got some cool pictures. Yeah. Thanks. And, and there'll, there'll be stuff this weekend because Cars und Cafe will be Saturday, Christmas Eve. There we go. Thanks again and until next week. Keep the shiny side up unless you didn't use your take welder, then it all just looks like crap. And keep those wheels down. <laughs>